To date, the largest human explosion ever created was by the Tsar Bomba, detonated by the Soviet Union in 1961. However, it was actually a scaled down test. The weapon's true potential was much larger. The bomb known as Project 602, codenamed Ivan, and unofficially named the Tsar Bomba, started its life as an idea in 1956. Following the test of RDS-37, the Soviet Union's first two-stage hydrogen bomb, calculations were done to see what the design could potentially do. Unlike pure fission bombs that have a practical size limit, hydrogen bombs can, in theory, be made to arbitrarily large yields. With this in mind, the go-ahead to create a massive bomb was given, and this was the start of Product 202, an early concept for what would eventually become the Tsar Bomba. Further testing and design changes occurred, and the updated Project 602 began development and construction. The bomb was a three-stage design, a fission primary as the first stage, two smaller fusion stages as the secondary, and a larger main fusion stage between them as the third. The fission primary would generate lots of X-rays that compress the secondary, causing them to fuse lithium hydrides, generating massive amounts of radiant pressure. This would compress the third stage, setting off the main fusion reaction, contributing just under half of the bomb's total yield. Neutrons from the fusion reactions would then cause the uranium-238 tamper to undergo fast fission, adding an additional 50 megatons to the yield. The design had the capacity to yield over 100 megatons. A full-scale test was rejected for many reasons. As a result, the bomb had the uranium-238 tamper of the third stage replaced with lead. This reduced the calculated yield to around 50 megatons. Another consideration was the crew of the aircraft carrying the bomb itself. They would likely not have survived a full-scale test. The aircraft, a modified Tupolev Tu-95, was just barely able to take off with the bomb loaded into its underside. The plane even had a special protective paint applied to help protect from the thermal pulse but even with added precautions, survival was still not assured. Once dropped, a parachute was deployed to slow its descent, giving the air crew a bit more time to escape. At 11.32 on October 30th, 1961, the bomb detonated. Between 3 and 4,000 meters above the ground, the bomb created a massive fireball over 8 kilometers, or 5 miles wide. The fireball never came in contact with the ground, the shockwave reflecting up pushed it back into the air like most airbursts. The shockwave from the blast hit the bomber when it was at a distance of 115 kilometers, causing the plane to drop an additional 1 kilometer before recovering. The fireball was visible for over 1,000 kilometers, being visible in Norway, Greenland, and Alaska. The mushroom cloud reached an altitude of 67 kilometers, or 45 miles, and was over 92 kilometers, or 59 miles wide. Both the blast wave and the seismic ground wave circled the Earth three times. A village 55 kilometers, or 34 miles, away from the test had all of its buildings destroyed by the blast. Some buildings even hundreds of kilometers away were damaged or destroyed. A person standing 100 kilometers or 62 miles away from the test could have experienced third-degree burns just from the thermal pulse. The bomb's yield was estimated to be around 57 megatons, or 57 million tons of TNT. And yet, this was only half the bomb's full potential. Think about the ludicrous power of this bomb. It could burn you from over 100 kilometers away, and its reach circled the planet three times. Now think about if they had not replaced the tampers with lead, and done the full 100 megatons test. Andrei Sakharov, one of the scientists who developed the bomb, became an anti-nuclear weapons activist and spent the rest of his career pushing for disarmament, as well as social reforms within the Soviet Union. The Tsar Bomba is the ultimate example of just because we can, doesn't mean we should. However, there were some people who looked at the arbitrary nature of hydrogen bomb design, paired it with a new concept in the works, and designed a monster that would have made the Tsar Bomba a firecracker in comparison.